friends, Lee Brown here and welcome back to My Kitchen, My Rules. Today we're going to do something, frankly all of you should know how to do, but you probably don't because for some reason people are buying hard boiled eggs in the gas station. I do not understand that. I know some of y'all eat the roller dogs too, but that's beyond me. So here's what you need for making hard boiled eggs. You need a pot with a lid, so that means you probably should go root around in the cabinet for a minute and get what you have. Then you need some eggs. So Lee Brown, why is your egg carton empty? <laughs> it's because I scrubbed them. Y'all should probably wash your eggs, especially if they come from somebody's house. I already scrubbed them in advance of y'all because I'm nice like that. So your nice clean eggs, you're gonna put down in the bottom of the pot. And what you wanna do is make sure they are not crowded. Crowded eggs do not get along well. In fact, I think this is a COVID friendly recipe. They are not really social distancing, but they are basically not crowding on each other. So see the bottom of my pot has room to move. If it does not have room to move, friends, you need to remove some eggs, okay? But don't eat them raw, bad idea. Now you gotta cover them with some cold water. And how much water do you need? Well, put in enough to where you have like an inch or so above your eggs. And spoiler alert, if they start to floating right away, that's not a great sign. So let's get some water in here, get them ready to roll. And if you're wondering why mine are all these different colors, friends, that's how they come out of the chickens. The ones from the grocery store, they're all matchy matchy. They taste fine and they might come from fine locations, but if you have a friend with some illegal chickens in the backyard, keep that friend, keep that friend because it's better to get eggs from somebody then to raise them yourself, although I do have a dream of being a poultry farmer, not gonna lie. All right, so we've got an inch of cold water above our non-crowded eggs. Now I'm gonna pause it so I can move the camera, and this is where a commercial break would go if I had sponsors. <laughs> All right, so no surprise, but if you want to boil things, you have to use high heat. If I had to tell y'all that, you're probably not cooking, you're just watching to look at things. So see, there's our eggs and their water. Now once this comes to a rapid boil, and that's like the big bubbles rolling around, your eggs are gonna start to dance in. You're gonna cut the heat off, cover it, and set it off. And I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do during the six to 10 minutes that your eggs are cooling under the lid. I'm an eight minute girl, but some of y'all like softer yolks and some of you like harder yolks. That's your kitchen, your rules. We are gonna do eight minute eggs here. So we'll tune back in in two seconds. I'm gonna give y'all a project while you're waiting. All right, so y'all can see my timer's going behind me on the stove while my eggs are in their eight minute bath. Y'all know that weird looking green color that gets inside your eggs sometimes? It looks really sketch. Here's the secret to avoiding it. And you get to clean out your ice maker at the same time. Put your stopper in the sink. Start running some cold water. <laughs> Dump a whole bunch of ice. And you're probably thinking, Lee Brown, why are you pouring all the ice in? Well, it's because I need to clean out my freezer every so often. Because y'all know your ice can taste really sketchy. And I like my ice to taste good when I put it in things. So I'm cleaning out my ice maker, making an ice bath at the same time. And here's what you got to remember. The eggs have to go in here. The split second your timer goes off. Get some tongs out, we'll put them in here. And that's gonna stop them from cooking. Very important. Now while that's happening, you can get the rest of your ingredients together. You need some vinegar. I'm gonna use white vinegar today, but you can use apple cider. You need salt and pepper. Of course, you know I like kosher. You need some pickle relish. And I've got Mount Olive, because it is from Mount Olive, North Carolina. Woo woo. And one of my girls from college was from Mount Olive. And you need Duke's mayonnaise, and frankly, you all need Duke's mayonnaise, and don't buy anything else, because that would be disgusting and gross. Now, if you're, I hate to even tell y'all this, because I'm gonna get in trouble, my grandmother will come back from the grave. You're supposed to use just French's yellow mustard, but I like French's mustard with horseradish in it. Don't tell her, y'all, but if you mix the two of them, a tablespoon of each, y'all are fixing to find out how good that is. And then, because they are deviled eggs, we're gonna add in some Texas peat powder. So hang on to your hat. That all comes after we get the perfect hard boiled egg. Okay, timer went off, here we go. And by the way, if you don't have tongs in your house, did you know your pasta scoop works really well for getting eggs out? Put them right in the ice bath, y'all. You gotta get them out and in quickly. Now, if you notice an egg floating because it's shell cracked, don't worry. Don't have to throw it out. You might have to drain a little bit of water out of the shell if it's snuck up in there. It will still taste good, so don't waste your eggs, you know. 
And by the way, if you have children that need to dye eggs for Easter, this is how you're gonna have perfect eggs for them to, to dip in the little paws thing. I guess they still make the paws stuff and sell it at the grocery store. Mine have outgrown them, but oh, that used to be so much fun. And in my family, we never wasted those Easter eggs because you can hunt them for a while and then you can eat them. And that's what we would use to make deviled eggs, which is why we're gonna follow up these perfect hard boiled eggs with deviled eggs. I'll show y'all in a second what they look like after they cool down and then we'll move on to part two. So make sure that you have liked this video and you have subscribed because this was just part one, friends. And here at My Kitchen, My Rules, we got lots of information for you. I'll see you. I'm super nervous because what if this isn't perfect? They're usually perfect. So let's open it up and see if we got the perfect hard boiled egg. Look at that shell coming off. So nice, look, so smooth. It feels good. I like good textures. I don't know about y'all, but that's how I pick paper and business cards. And I don't know if it makes a difference in real estate. Maybe that's why I sell houses. I don't know, but look, smooth and perfect. Now we got to cut it open and you cut it right down the middle so we can make some nice deviled eggs. And I got a yolk like I like it. I've got dark yellow. It's perfect. There's no green crap around the edge. And so now what I'm gonna do is dump that yolk right over here in my bowl and keep my eggs for a nice vessel for my deviled eggs, which we are about to make here in step two after I shell some eggs. Cause y'all don't need to watch me shell eggs. I'm gonna get after it. But spoiler alert, we have a dozen here. We're only going to prepare 11 of them. One of them's gonna get chopped up, including the whites to go into the mixture. It gives a little texture. So I'm gonna take a quick commercial break here where y'all click like, 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 cause you're so amazed by how pretty the eggs are. And then I'll show you the rest of the story. All right, friends. Now, if you're lucky, you have a deviled egg plate which I don't even know where I got this, probably at an estate sale somewhere because my family wasn't fancy enough to have a deviled egg plate. Although mama got one from Tupperware one time. She probably still got it around the house. I probably should have stolen it from her, but here we are with my one from an estate sale. Go to antique malls and find a deviled egg plate because some things y'all, you got to hang on to. Not everything has to be Ikea and give me an amen on that. So here's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna make our filling. You're done cooking, by the way. This is the perfect deviled eggs. All you have to do is boil it for a minute and you're done. We're gonna mash up these yolks and I chopped up my spare eggs in here. So of the dozen that we started with, you have all the yolks in here, plus you have the eggs that weren't gonna hold filling. And I'm just gonna use my fork to mash them a little bit and make sure that it's gonna be the right consistency. And part of the secret of having a couple of whole eggs in there chopped up is that it makes that texture so perfect. All right, so we got that started. Now, we need some Duke's mayonnaise, all right. And if you eat anything but Duke's, you are not my people. You need about half a cup of Duke's. Now, everything that we add in here, y'all, you're gonna have to adapt until you get the filling, the consistency that you like it because in my kitchen, my rules, it's my way and not even of the highway, but you'll just do your own thing. Cause if you read deviled egg recipes, there's a zillion of them because it's like the original creativity food. I did see one recipe on the internet that had bacon in it and I was tempted, but I couldn't do it after all. We're gonna add some pickle relish next and you need, oh, I don't know, a fair amount of it. I don't like too much because I don't want the sweetness to overpower my mayonnaise and my mustard and my vinegar but on the two heaping teaspoons ought to do the job, which I imagine that's what a quarter of a cup or thereabouts. And I'm gonna go ahead and start mixing. I'm the person who likes to mix my deviled eggs as I go, just so I can keep an eye on that mayonnaise, friends, and make sure I've got the right amount. And actually, I do not. So let's put another spoonful in there, keep that up. Oh, it's already smelling so good because eggs are amazing. And isn't the egg salad sandwich like the most underrated sandwich food? Although you shouldn't eat it in a closed space because it smells terrible. All right, now we need to add some salt and pepper. And this is to your taste. So I'm gonna use, oh, I don't know, a couple of squeezes. Need a little bit of salt. And I'm gonna shake in. Oh, I don't know. This is probably going to wind up being a, a half a teaspoon of salt. I don't want to be over salty, actually. 
and maybe a quarter teaspoon of pepper, because my mother will want to eat them, and she can't have too much spice. Let's see where we're at. Mm. Needs most salt. So, let's put in another quarter of a teaspoon. Stir that in. Next ingredient up. I'll keep forgetting to show you camera friends what it looks like. Now we need mustard. So you need about two tablespoons of mustard. If you are following your grandmother's rules, it's two tablespoons of French's. And I'm pretty sure we used it because that was the cheapest one. And don't tell her, I mean, she's passed away. So she won't know unless you go to heaven because she's totally in heaven. And I hope I get there too. If you want to get there, you should let me know. I'll give you the secret. And then I'm putting in a tablespoon of French's with horseradish in it, which is an extra kick of flavor. And don't, don't doubt me on that, y'all. The French's with horseradish is amazing. And when you try it, you're gonna send me a little message and say, Lee Brown, are you for real? I love this. And I'll say, I know, friend, I know. I know how much you love it. So that's what I want you to do is click subscribe and give me a like and then come back to the comments and tell me what you think. And let's see what we have here. Mmm. Man, I can get the horseradish, but a little more salt. And salt, y'all, is like the secret to bringing the flavor out, but you can't take it back out. So I'd rather put in a little bit too little and add than to try and go backwards. We have all made that mistake, amen? And I need one more little scoop of mayonnaise because I'm not happy with my texture yet because it is totally a work in progress. And I like mine on the chunky side. You may like yours. Definitely pureed if you do. You can get out a mashed potato mixer. You can get your mixer out to get hardcore. I like them fork made and chunky. Oh, now we're cooking with gas. All right, let's put in two more shakes of pepper. And some folks put paprika on the top of theirs. Look, I'll tell you all the secret. This is another secret besides the horseradish. They're deviled eggs, right? You need some Texas peat dust. This stuff is amazing. And of course, Texas peat is from North Carolina. So I totally have like the most Southern deviled eggs here because I'm using Southern ingredients. That's maybe an eighth of a teaspoon. I'm not putting in a ton because I don't want to kill anybody. You can of course add in as much as you like because it will make these amazing. All right, so there's what our mixture looks like. It looks like an egg salad sandwich. So, next thing we're gonna do is load up our pastry tube, which is also known as a Ziploc bag. And so I need to get my spatula, which I did not plan for in advance, because, hey, I've been working all day and I came home to make this in advance of Easter. Also, the perfect food for dinner on the grounds, or homecoming, or a family reunion, or having your boss over. Do people still do that? because I wish they did. And then all of my agents could have me over for supper. Why wouldn't that be awesome? Oh my gosh, this tastes so good. It's taking all of my willpower not to just put my face right in here and eat it straight without making it beautiful on my deviled egg plate. But you know what? When it is Easter, you need to bust out your good china. Actually, y'all, bust out your good china every day. I really don't know why we wait on things. We should enjoy having the company of other people. So if you've been at home because of the COVID or something, it's time to re-enter society in the way that makes you comfortable, but you got to be around people. All right, so we are going to close up our Ziploc bag here. And then if you are fancy in pastry, you might have a pastry tube, but when you have a Ziploc bag like Lee Brown, here's what we do. We're gonna slice the corner off with our kitchen shears. And then Shazam, friends, we have made a pastry tube. So here's what we're gonna do. Let me make sure my camera can see all of this. I keep forgetting that I'm supposed to show y'all lots of things. All right, then we're gonna disclose enough in here to make it pretty. Look, y'all, that's how you make pretty deviled eggs. You squeeze it out of a Ziploc bag. Now you could do it out of a spoon, I reckon, but you know what? Be fun, be festive and make it beautiful. And then you can top it off like a lot. I said a lot of folks will put a little sprinkle of paprika on the top. For some reason, 
that belongs on deviled eggs. I don't really want to put it on mine because they already have enough flavor to them right now. And so that is where we're at. And what you're going to find, friends, is that you actually probably have more filling than you have eggs by the time you get down to it. And this leftover, oh, that's a giant one. That's a mouthful. That'll be for the preacher. We'll have to carry that one to his house. And what you'll find is that it makes an excellent sandwich. Put it on some rye bread. Although you're probably gonna put it on Merida if you're here in the South, just some plain old white bread. But I like mine on rye because I love me some rye bread. That's that Jewish rye with the seeds in it. Oh, so good. All right, friends, look how easy that was. You are a mere 30 minutes or so into this project and you have got an appetizer slash side dish slash baptism, christening, wedding, homecoming, Easter, Christmas, family reunion, treasure for the ages. And then everybody's gonna want some more and you're gonna have to say, make your own because I'm done for the day, friends. And that is, that's our final action. What do you think? Make sure you click like, give me some love in the comments and we'll see you next time on My Kitchen, My Rules. Mm -hmm.